Hello, and welcome to the weekly broadcast of Strategic Speaking for Results. I'm Elizabeth Bachman, your host, and today I want to talk to you about how do you introduce yourself in a way that is memorable? This is mostly important when so that other people know how to refer you. And I was reminded of this over the last several times over the last couple of weeks because I've been seeing friends, I've been see, seeing people who are outside my regular circle of my regular business circle. And I realized that a lot of my friends, family friends, and so forth, don't really know how to describe me. A lot of them still remember me as the person who ran an opera company, which I haven't really done since 2016. So uh, trying to describe what it is that I do and put it in a short, concise phrase is I'm reminded to tell people. One of the friends at the cocktail party the other day said, oh, I know somebody who needs you and has referred me to someone who looks like it's going to be a really interesting client. So here's the first thing. You've got to tell people what you want them to know about you. Otherwise, they're just going to make it up and who knows. And you can prepare it. One of the most useful things I've learned over the last several years is to do a done for you email. And that's an introduction. It's a standard introduction. I wrote it up in a Word document and it says, introducing Elizabeth for a speaking, uh, a speaking gig, introducing Elizabeth to a corporate client, introducing Elizabeth to a referral partner, for instance. At more or less the same, the same email with the things pointed out that I think my ideal listener, that the person I want to reach, will care about. One of the best ways to be introduced is to be referred by somebody else, but they can't refer you if they don't know what it is you want them to know. So if you think about how you would introduce yourself at a networking event, for instance, think about the system of problem, solution, benefit. And you can find out more about this on the my YouTube channel where I talk about uh, telling stories. It's one of the classic ways of telling stories. What you want to do is mention a problem that is a pain point for the people you're trying to reach. The problem is in most marketing departments, da, 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 da. The, the problem is if you are, uh, the problem is in our company, da, 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 da. What I do is, and that's the solution. What I do is fix this problem or put the right people together, enable the team grease the wheels so that the right people can work on the right projects and I can run interference where they don't need to be um, run interference so that they can focus on what it is they do, for instance. So that, and then the benefit, that's the most important thing. And that's the thing most people forget. So that they can focus on, the team can focus on what they really need to do to get the project finished and onto your desk sooner rather than later. Now, I didn't practice that one, I just made it up. So you could work on something like that. One of the things that I tell people, colleagues, friends in networking events is the problem is, or actually a better way to do it is, do you know how, do you know how eight out of 10 of the high level women in tech and law have a seat at the table, but still aren't being listened to? So that's because the women who aren't being listened to are the women that I help. So I'm saying it in that way so that people will understand the emotional impact of what it is. Mm -hmm. So you know how high level women 
have a seat at the table, but still aren't being listened to. What I do is help them show up as strategic thinkers so that they become the ones to be followed, the ones to be promoted, or the ones to be hired. The benefit is follow, promote, hire. You will note that most of this is about the problem people face and the benefit. What I do is help them get through that glass ceiling so that they become the ones to be followed, the ones to be promoted, the ones to be hired. It's short, it's concise. Um, I should usually use the words glass ceiling because that's another trigger word. If you tell your friends this, they'll remember, mm -hmm. oh, Elizabeth's the one who goes through the glass, helps women get through the glass ceiling. Another way to think about it is if you're working with a colleague, who do you know who would be a useful contact for that colleague? Pay attention to your network and then say, let's have a conversation about how we could refer each other. That's when you're going to use your done for you email. You say, I am trying to reach, say you're trying to reach uh, senior managers in a big or vice president of data analysis in a big firm. <clears throat> so you say, you know how data analysis has such and such a problem. Well, what I do is da, 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 da. So that da, 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 da. Work it out, mm -hmm. talk to your colleague and work out what's going to make the most sense. And then you pre-write the email. You say, dear X, uh, for them, dear X, I'd like to recommend my friend, Elizabeth Bachman. She helps women get past the glass ceiling. She has a unique system, et cetera, something like that. And recommend that. So they could recommend you to the people that you are looking to. And you, of course, are going to do that in return. Now, if you want to make sure that senior management knows what you're really good at, and maybe they don't actually know, find an ally who can recommend you. Again, a third party recommendation is so much better than you saying, hey, I'm great, you should promote me. Have somebody else say, hey, Elizabeth Bachman is really great. She has a system nobody else is using that really helps women get past the glass ceiling. You should talk to her. But of course, you have written the email. The thing I particularly like to do for a done for you email is I will put a little, I've got the email and then above it, I have, thank you for agreeing to recommend me here. I know that you're busy. So I have taken the liberty of pre-writing something for you. That's very important because I get asked to write recommendations all the time and it takes a lot of time. Send them what you want them to say. And then I always follow up with, feel free to put it into your words or just use it as is. And most people will use it more or less as is. So there's a lot more on this subject. If you have any questions, please contact me wherever you are hearing or seeing this little video nugget. And I'll see you on the next one.